All right, so welcome everyone to Changeling the Lost, Lilbrook Reunion, a storytelling game of beautiful madness, episode three. That's a tongue twister for you. I'm Chris, I am the storyteller of this game, and uh, also the host for the evening, which I assume is involved in the job title, nailing it. Uh, let's let's go uh, by first letter of your character's name. So let me see here. That would be uh, Jonas. I think starts. Yeah. Hello. I'm Adam, and I'm playing Jonas the Darkling. That's it. I think. Hello. I am Toring. I am playing Lars, and he is Bison. Hello. I am Harry. I'm playing Nate, and I am Ferris. Hi, I'm Megan, and I play Nova, a beast. Hey, uh, I play Silas, and I am an ogre. Kids here, and I play Tide, and I'm an elemental. So, this is episode three. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, the first episode is available on my YouTube channel. I am the Primogen on YouTube and Twitter, and we lost Silas, but that's fine uh, for now. Hopefully, he'll be back soon. Uh, so you will things will change around a little oh there we go perfect uh, so I was saying episode one is out right now and episode two is out for my patrons but will be available for everyone to view as a VOD or as a VOD on my channel in a week so and that's roughly how it's gonna be so the first two the first week after something has streamed it will be available on my patron and the week after that it will be available on YouTube I probably couldn't have made that any more complicated I think I, I think it. I think I nailed it. So um, I also want to say that we have two new shows on the Twitch stream this week. Uh, one of them has already been shown this Monday. It was Blood on the Temesis, which I assume is a Latin name for the Thames, uh, by Near Dark Studios. Welcome to the gang, and which is by the way a Vampire V5 uh, campaign. And then Devil's Luck Gaming is running Fractured Mirror, which is another Changeling the Lost campaign, and they will be playing tomorrow at. 10 p.m. EST, which is about an hour after the Occultist Anonymous, the Mage the Awakening game, is running. So check in for that and see how they tackle this amazing game. I don't really think there's any other announcements kind of light on the Kickstarter front, so unless any of the players have anything they want to announce. Um, Nothing for me. I got w one thing. Yep. Uh, if any of you tune into Saratoga by Night, we're having some trouble finding time to record the season finale. It will be we'll be recording it next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, but the Saturday after. So I'm sorry for the three weeks it's been. Normally we upload weekly. It's my fault, mostly. It'll be fixed. Oh, I'm gonna assume that it's my fault because uh, you were on schedule until you joined this game. <laughs> I'll take the blame for that one. Uh, no, it's mainly school. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, ah, but... school. I see. Yes. Well, because everyone else, all my other, all the other cast members are also at the same college I am. Oh, so. is it midterms? It is midterms. Ah, of course, of course, the bane <laughs> of every student. So, uh, but Saratoga mm. by night, correct? V yes. Check it out. It's on. Um, everything it's there on everything any podcast thing you will find it yeah perfect it's everywhere I was diligent. <laughs> you cannot escape sartoga by night threat uh, it will find you <laughs> perfect thank you harry do we have any other announcements or shall we get started i'm gonna take that as a let's go so okay everyone let's play a storytelling game of beautiful madness fuck yeah Exactly. Last session, the group uh, came back to Littlebrook after a daring escape from Arcadia. Uh, they had been five to begin with, but a sixth member joined them. That was Silas, who initially was hunting them, but had a change of heart and joined up with the refugees, escaping to Littlebrook, Minnesota, the safest town in Minnesota for the last 17 years. Um, some of you were taken in the 60s, some in the 80s, and some in 2001, but you came out in 2019, which you discovered last session. Um, you didn't get to spend much free time in Little Brook before a large purple dragon, 
a former pet slash mount of Silas, also escaped into Little Brook, Minnesota. But that's probably not going to be a problem in the future. Um, no, not at all. Uh, not at all. <laughs> Let's keep that one out of mind for now. Uh, when the forest is burning, that's when you go, oh, oh shit, a dragon. I wonder where that one came from. Um, but you uh, decided to go to find a place to rest because you did come out in the middle of the night and you headed over first to the Johansen Auto Repairs, which is the same auto repair that was started by Lars back in the, was it the 50s or 60s you opened up? Uh, would have opened that up in the 40s. In the 40s, after the war. Uh, and, of course, things have changed a little bit. There was a security camera, and thinking better of it, you decided to instead go for uh, the uh, local car, car dealership where Nate, your father, was running a business. And... Uh, Presumably, someone else was at this point. What with it being roughly 40 years later, or 30 years later. You uh, knocked on the door, had a little plan about pretending that you were victims of a, I wouldn't say hidden run. Yeah, actually, a hidden run. That's exactly what it was. And we proceeded to commit our own sort of hidden run. Yes, you did. <laughs> because the person who came to greet you, uh, who was very worried about Nova, who was the uh, victim of this hit and run initially, um, turned out to be none other than Nate himself, except 30 years older, a little unkempt, um, and apparently also some kind of weird papier mache puppet. Nate wasted no time and decided to waste this um, weird thing, this fetch, and fired a couple of bullets, which essentially scattered the party in all manners of direction. Um, the fetch survived, called for the police, and Nate decided to try to convince uh, the owner of the junkyard, uh, whose name was Martin uh, Wellman, I believe? Uh, Martin, at least. Uh, yes, Martin, yes. yep. However, while this was going on, uh, Tide and Jonas, you went off, uh, pretended you were just passerbys who just happened to hear several bullets being fired in quick succession and headed over to your former home where you encountered presumably another fetch. Now, before we continue talking about this, we can also say that none of you have actually seen your fetches being created. You were not even aware that they existed until now. Um, so... This, of course, came to a surprise to most of you, but the fetch that Jonas encountered seemed similarly in a state of unkemptness and perhaps even depression, similar to Nate's. Uh, Jonas initiated some contact, there was a words exchanged, but the fetch threatened to call the police, and Jonas and Ty decided to. This, that discretion is a better part of Valor, and headed off for future communication with it at a later point. Lars, however, decided to head home to his old um, home in the, I believe it was Oak Grove, or was it something else the neighborhood was called? Uh, Oak Ridge was the name Oak of the Ridge. neighborhood. You headed to Oak Ridge and uh, found the old shed, work shed. the work yeah. shed that you built many, many years ago. You broke your way in without any real problems and proceeded to create a small furnace out of whatever you found lying around. Lighting a fire and going to sleep. And uh, Silas headed back towards Jones, the roadside diner where you had first come out of the hedge. Joan being a childhood friend of yours who you missed quite dearly. And uh, Nova, you, f I would say fluttered, but you have legs now, so you ran after him as fast as you could. Uh, where Silas had a rather emotional reconnection with his childhood friend who at first didn't want to admit or realize that this was the actual Silas of her childhood, but because of a shared memory, uh, a connection was formed and she offered you and your friends to spend the night. Silas also realized that the roadside diner only served Pepsi now, not Coke, which... That's going to take some time to get used to. <laughs> and uh, convening upon the uh, roadside diner, one after another, the remaining changelings, except for Lars, 
and after a short exchange of conversation, you all fell asleep on the floor of the kitchen, using some blankets and other rugs and things she had lying around, that Joan had lying around, and that's where we ended, I believe. Oh, it's not. Because where we ended was Lars waking up to someone with a shiny silver badge on their chest, saying, what the hell are you doing here? I do believe that's yeah. everything. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger yeah. indeed. And <laughs> we are not going to start there. We are going to start oh. at the diner. Oh, damn. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I am a terrible person. So what happens is that it's very early morning. You can't have gotten more than four hours of sleep. But the sun is in the sky, although it is a bit cloudy outside. Sleeping on a tiled floor is probably not the most comfortable place to be. But you've been sleeping at worse places. Uh, who would be the first of you to wake up this morning? I think Jonas will be up pretty quickly. Jonas? He, he, yeah, sorry. He will, he, will, he will go up and just look around the diner and try to find some some newspaper or, or anything, like some kind of information on what's going on, basically. Uh, Jonas not keeping any newspapers in the kitchen, but are you going out into the dining area? I'm I'm just gonna make a like open the door a bit and just peek out yeah. to see if there's movement or people there. You check out through the kitchen door and you realize that Joan is about. She's cleaning up the place and she's actually just turning the open closed sign and flicking on the neon light as well. And she turns to look at you and she smiles and waves. Oh, hello. Are you uh, one of Silas's friends? Yeah, good morning. I, I opened good morning. The, the door. Um, sorry, I uh, hope it was okay for us staying here. Yes, tonight. of course, of course. Heavens no, I'm not using this place during during the few hours I'm sleeping. Of course. Thank you. Uh, you don't happen to have a, a newspaper or anything lying around? Mm. Need the days to days, but... Uh, a newspaper? Well, I... Do I, I suppose I have one? She she uh, brings out the Lilbrook Herald, which I really hope I did, got the right name of now. The Lilbrook Herald, which is the local newspaper. Yes, those still exist. And it has today's date on it. And it is August 15th, 2019. Thank you. Mind if I borrow it? Absolutely. I'm afraid there's really not much to read in it. Apparently, uh, Nate over at the uh, car dealership had a run-in with a wild uh, uh, elk, I think. He broke his arm, but that's about it. He was probably out. Ah, I don't know what he was doing. He doesn't come here that much. Does he like... like look that's what they call it? At... <laughs> <laughs> Does she look at all like freaked out about my 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 me not having a face or anything? Or she no, like, no, like she doesn't. Eyeball, she doesn't seem that that concerned about it, to be honest. Okay, and I'll I'll take the newspaper and uh, sit in the back corners in one of the the booths and start just reading through it. There's. There is really not much to read, to be honest. There's the usual, um, well, the usual wouldn't be the usual for you, unless you were reading this back in 2001. Were you? No. All right. Uh, the uh, Little Brook Herald is fairly thin. It has maybe four or five sheets of paper in it, and it's really more of a pamphlet than uh, an actual newspaper. Is it heavily like, relating to anything? Outside of Little Brook, any like no, use bigger than no, okay. no. Yeah. There are some uh, game scores uh, for the local teams in the uh, interstate inter interstate thing going on. I assume it would be going on in August. This is one of those things I don't know. Being European, would there be uh, any? What sport would it be? Football. Uh, football. That would be 
probably September. Ah, uh, so they're uh, preparing for that then. Yeah, this yes. would be preseason. Yeah, so there's like a little, um, there's like a little uh, piece on how the coach is training the uh, Little Brook Blackbirds for the uh, new season that's coming up. Um, there are a lot of ads for local businesses. You recognize a few names, and there is of course the front page news that Nate Kelly, the owner and proprietor of the used car lot had a run-in with uh, some wild animal yesterday on his way home from the halfway in. And he's fine, but he... Uh, well, considering the circumstances, he's fine. Uh, but he's broken an arm, and he's got some minor cuts and lacerations. There's a picture of him with his arm in a... In a... Um, uh, sling. Sling, thank you. And he's looking a little bit perplexed, almost confused. I'm, I'm, Frankly, I'm a little offended by being called a wild animal by the local paper. But... <laughs> well, it suits somewhat, actually. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I I will just like go try to remember all the ads like for local businesses, names, places. Just try to remember them as good as possible, and then I'll I'll try to read the article about the Nate's accident uh, and like see who wrote it and just gather some information about that and i think that will that yeah. will take the morning until everyone else okay up. perfect i will look up what you do gather uh is that officer barton or deputy barton technically uh, she, uh was the one who arrived at the location where um where nate or mr kelly had been attacked and she confirmed that he was relatively fine. He was treated at the uh, sheriff's office, uh, primary treatment, and then he, in the early, early, well, actually, no, that, that wouldn't have made it. So he was treated, essentially bandaged up at the uh, sheriff's office. And honestly, the press works fast here, you think, because this happened four, five hours ago. No, five, do six? I, do I do I catch the name of the, the author of the article? Let me look that up for you very quickly. Let me see here. Uh, the name of the author is Tobias Cromwell, who also apparently seems to be the editor-in-chief of the Littlebrook Herald. Now that you look through the pamphlet again, you realize that he's the only journalist slash editor slash columnist working for the Herald. Excellent. Yes. Um, you smell the... Uh, well, you smell coffee brewing from the kitchen, and the rest of you wake up, if you weren't already awake, by Joan walking very carefully between your, between your sleeping bodies and essentially setting up shop for the morning. I, I wake up and I go... Um, I follow uh, the scent of coffee right to where it is. Yeah. It's... It, I'm... It's maybe the first thing that has started to click in my head that this is something I remember. So I go like right to the coffee maker and like look at it. The coffee maker is kind of an old model. You know, the really big ones uh, where you pour in the water in the top and there's this like graded lid and then you have to get a filter. It's drip coffee, of course. And this big glass pot that's standing on uh, a couple of um, five cent coins. Uh, I don't know the colloquial term for them. I'm sorry. Um, dimes? Is it dimes? Uh, five nickel. Nickels. Setting up on a bunch of nickels. Thank you very much. Um, so the coffee won't burn. And there's also some sandwiches being uh, taken out of the fridge or prepared. She, it seems like she did most of this work last night. So she's taken out stuff. She's uh, warming things. Got the toaster oven ready. A toast oven. Stuff like that. I just ask, uh, can I can I have a cup? Oh can yes, cup of, of course, of course, sweetheart. Just take as much as you want. There's cream in the fridge. Uh, I pour it and I just carry it over to a seat, and I don't even drink it. I just kind of, I just smell it and hold it in my hand. Yeah. There are endless possibilities in Arcadia. There are animals with the heads of humans. There are castles flying in the sky, but there's not coffee. This no is the coffee. first time in. You don't even know how long that you can actually smell ground coffee. 
The rest of you are free to take coffee as well. Even She even gives all of you a sandwich free of charge. It's ham and cheese. Really nothing special according to, to Joan, but it's normal human food, which again, you haven't had in a long time. Thank you for this. How can we... I don't think we have any money, miss. It's fine, it's fine. You can just call me Joan. You don't have to do any of that miss business and... It's on the house, really. Friends of Silas is your friends of mine. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, do you need work? Can we work for you? Oh, oh, sweetheart, I, I'm afraid uh, I don't really have much profit to to split amongst the people. Besides me, uh, I'm sure there's other people in town who can offer you jobs, but I really don't have that much. I mean, I have enough customers to make do, but I couldn't pay you I mean, much. No, I mean, if it's okay that we get, like, food that's about to go bad or something, some leftovers or something, we still gotta, like, we, I mean, I'd, I'm not gonna speak for everyone, but I'd be okay working for that. Agreed. Well, that's, that's awfully nice of you. I'll, uh... Tell you what, I'll, I'll think about it. I, I, I'm sorry, my head's in the business right now in the morning. Here, she digs into her wallet and she fishes out a hundred dollar bill and she slips it to you, Tide. And she says, tell you what, you can pay me back later if you don't want to take a gift, but take this money to the, uh, what was it called again? I haven't been there in so long, but take it to the Marianne's. It's a local Goodwill. And I'm sure you can get yourself something nicer to wear. Unless that's some kind of fashion statement. She carries most of the things you might need. That's... Oh, thank you. Of course, of course. Like I said, a friend of Silas's. And Silas, I am so sorry for yesterday. If I had known it was you, I wouldn't have... Well, I wouldn't have threatened to call the police on you. I hope you can forgive me. I just laugh a little bit. It's not a mocking laughter. It's more like, you don't have to apologize for anything. I know how strange it looks and how strange everything is. You've done more than enough, not just for me, but for my new friends as well. And not only did no one force you to do it under the circumstances, no one could blame you for wanting to look out for yourself. But then, you always were more daring than I was. <laughs> she just laughs a little bit and um, gives you a hug, which is a little bit awkward because you're easily double her height, but you kind of, I guess you kind of need bend down to, to hug her. This is the second hug yeah. I've gotten from her in many yeah. decades. Yeah. And oh. it becomes less awkward and more pleasant every mm. time. She uh, she laughs a little bit and, and looks at the door and goes, Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do have to start attending to business because the morning rush is just about to start. It's You, you look at the clock and it's five past seven, roughly, in the morning. Um, but you all know where Marianne's is. It's just down Main Street, uh, about halfway between here and the halfway end, which is, I guess, ironic. And uh, if you come back here at uh, around, well, I don't know, come back here whenever you want. But during breakfast, lunch, and dinner, this place is going to be pretty crowded. And I will keep your offer in mind, mind you. I would really appreciate having some more help around here. It's just that I don't want to tie you down. I'm an old woman. I've been doing this for a long time. I, I'll be doing fine on my own, but I wouldn't say no to some help, I suppose. Well, I've right. been tied down really hard so far. We've only yeah. started being free. We can choose to help you. Because you've chosen to help us. Thank, th you. thank you. I, I appreciate it. And uh, if any, if even half of what Silas told me yesterday was true, then I'm happy you found your way back to to, to Littlebrook. It's, it's safe here. It's 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 much safer here. I'm happy you're back. It's probably safe for you. 
But thank you. Now, um, Happy to be yeah. back, Joe. I say gratefully. And then start making my way out the back, away from the customers coming in, and back to the other subtly for them to start coming when they can. Yeah. Perfect. I hold up the the newspaper and and looks at Joan and is like, can can I borrow this today? Of course, sweetheart. Of course, you can borrow it. I, I finished reading it in two minutes. It's really not much. Thank you. And of course, then I'll go of course. And follow Silas. Before I go, I noticed that the coffee ran out, and not even thinking, I go over and I put in a new uh, filter and I put in just the right amount of. Uh, ground coffee and I close it and I hit start and then I head out she uh Joan gives you a, a smile and thank you dearie that's really awfully nice of you now good luck out there and uh if you see old crumble tell him that he should he should really should be sleeping at that time of the night and uh she uh, she starts greeting the customers who come into the store or into the uh, restaurant and as you leave we are going to jump finally back to Lars. You were woken up by a person standing in the doorway, their silhouette only barely visible as the morning light was go shining through. The glint of the silver star on their chest, what caught your eyes at first. And the woman who spoke to you uh, stands with one hand on her hip, and you can not really make out any features yet. And she goes, when did you get here? What are you doing here? And just kind of look at her with terror and squeak out an answer of just shelter. Shelter? Why do y'all want shelter here? You you got the whole... How... She, she pinches the bridge of her nose and you start seeing her features. And this person is not human is your first thought she's like you uh, at, a, at a casual glance you could tell that you could probably think that her her um, broad nose almost muscle like appearance the kind of pointy ears and uh, thick uh, blonde hair is just just how she looks but on a closer look you see a resemblance to I guess a Clydesdale horse. Like she, she's very sturdily built. She's very, very tall for a woman. She could. Oh, she, I mean, she's not as tall as Silas, but she's, she's uh, definitely taller than you and how you used to be. And um, she's, she's got these um, kind of sturdy hands. Nails are black and kind of thick. And uh, you, also notice that she's not wearing shoes in fact her feet are hooves and she uh she's giving you this kind of um this kind of skeptical kind of worried look and she goes okay out of the shed get in my car don't cuss a fuss or we're gonna have a problem okay 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 and i'll just yeah. go along with her because he's ready to bolt but now he's curious to find out about her because yeah. she's different. Yeah, she's definitely different. And she walks uh, across the grass and you see a family standing in the doorway. You see an old man and in front of him you see a younger man uh, holding his wife over the shoulder and one hand resting on a, on a, uh, on a child, ch child's shoulder. And they're looking really worried as you as you walk by them and this woman she looks over to to the uh, man uh, the the adult man and she goes uh, apologies mr johansson i don't know what this vagrant's doing here but i'll take him down to the station and we'll figure things out hope it didn't cause too much trouble no 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 it just we, we saw the smoke and figured i mean I don't really know how that happened but and she's just uh, don't don't worry about it. Maybe he was burning some fertilizer in there. It's it's all good. Burning some fertilizer. And you see a semblance, uh, a familiar res a resemblance even to yourself in these people, uh, especially the old man. Which it's 
it's like well she did say Johansson you realize mm -hmm. yes this is your family so um, I kind of want to look at them out of the corner of my eye but I don't mm -hmm. want to look directly at them mm -hmm. you just kind of take them in and try to memorize their features yeah. they look worried and a little scared but you do realize that the older man who is like hunched over and leaning on a on a uh, on a cane actually he's got a bad back he looks like he might have recognized you but he's not sure from where yeah I just want to kind of keep my head down yeah and just get on the other side of the the large woman yeah yeah she uh, she keeps you she keeps an eye on you but doesn't seem to want to handcuff you or anything just walking towards her uh, car which is a is it still a police car if it's the sheriff's office or is it yeah it would okay. still be a police yeah car. so it's a police it's car office, just police yeah okay patrol car patrol car yeah um and uh she just goes get in the back and uh we're gonna head down to the office uh, just to be clear clear here <sighs> you're not under arrest that's very important for me to tell you right now i'm not gonna lock you up i'm not gonna convict you or anything we don't do that here but in return, I want you to be honest with me. You said you want, you're here for shelter. How did you get to Lilbrook? She gets in the car and turns on the engine as you're talking. I'll get into the car. And only once I'm inside the car and the door is closed, well, I lean forward and answer her. And I'll kind of lean forward and say you're different like me of course i am it's been about it's been about 25 years since i got out of arcadia came back That's here right. and yeah obviously they make him weird up here in minnesota but they don't make him that weird i get i got back here in 94 i was about I was about 17, I guess, when I came out. But that was 94. You're not supposed to be here. There hasn't been anyone from Arcadia or the Hedge in 17 years. Well, last night, six of us came back. Six? She just breaks the car. Uh, there's no one behind you, but she, she just stops the car and looks over her shoulder like, what do you mean six of you? I don't suppose anybody reported anything strange last night? Say, gunshots? <sighs> Shit. That was you? You were the one who attacked uh, the fetch? No, 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 no. That was not me. That was the original. Wait, are you saying that... The, ori the real Nate Kelly's back? Is that what you're telling yes. me? Yes. Oh, shit. Okay, well, that makes sense. I I yeah. am Lars Johansson. Lars Johansson. Well, that th was my son. See, that, Lars, that's going to be a bit of a problem. You're not alive anymore, so I don't know what to tell you. There are, there are a few of us that came back. Six of you. Shit. The principal's going to be so mad about this. Ooh. Look, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna we're gonna go down to the station and we're gonna get you something to wear because you can't wear what you're wearing right now. You know that, right? You're yes. gonna be someone's gonna think you're a vagrant or a hoodlum or whatever. I'm gonna give you something to wear and I'm gonna send you off to the library. You know where the library is, right? How long ago? How long ago? 60-something. Jesus. Pretty many. Six. <sighs> All right. I'll go with you to the library. I don't even know if the library was around back then, was it? I don't remember. <sighs> well, shit. Okay. And probably. Yeah. Uh, All right. Um, we'll go to the station. I'll get you something to wear, and we'll head to the library then. Matthew's going to fill you in on everything you need to know. 
But I need to know something, Lars. And don't lie to me. How did you get here? But we ran. How did you get here? I followed the yellow brick road. I ran too. What do you think? But all right. Well, then why are you asking me these questions? Look, look, Matthew's gonna make it. I can't tell you this. I'm not. It's not my jurisdiction, right? I need to cover up some stuff. I'm. I've been working since one in the morning, fixing shit that you folks have been up to, and I still got some house calls to make. Fuck! I need to go to the market. Oh. Sh did you find the dragon yet? <sighs> what dragon? Big flying purple thing. Lars, are you telling me you brought a dragon back to Littlebrook? I just figured I should warn you now. I didn't bring it. One of the others did. That's semantics. There's six of you. You brought a dragon with you. As far as well, I'm concerned, as far as the principal's going to be concerned, as far as Matthew is concerned, that's a problem you are bringing to Lilbrook. It'll make sense. But for now, you're telling me the truth, right? Are you lying? Why would I lie to you? Do you promise that you're not lying? Do you swear on your name that you are not lying? I swear on my name that I'm telling you the truth. <sighs> Shit. All right. Thank you. Let's let's go to the station. She uh starts driving again. And as that happens, the five of you are currently standing outside of Jones, uh, in the back, I suppose, the the kitchen entrance. Um, where do you go? I, I say to everyone, okay, it seems like that people, at least Joan didn't seem to care or notice or something about how we look, or you and her, Silas, have some, some experiences that I cannot share, but so I don't know how we appear for everyone else, but it seems fine to move around, maybe. Uh, I agree. This is the last. I say blankly. I look down at the rags that I wear that have only gotten even filthier as the day went on. Ty, you have the money. No, you have the money, right? From, uh, from Joe, because... We need to go to the Goodwill, at least, and look for some things that we can get cheaply and easily. Okay. Yeah, like, I didn't just holding the money like this. I'm just, I'm just nodding. Yeah. Yeah, let's just get to the Goodwill as quickly as we can. Wait, what about the other fellow who was here? Was... Lars? I come for the time before cell phones. Wait, maybe we can... I don't know, get, get a phone number? How, how do we find him? I mean, depends if someone else find him, then we cannot found him, then we can ask. But he ran off. Maybe we can tell Jones that it, Joan, that if we, that if she came, uh, that, oh, sorry, that if he came over uh, to tell him to go to Goodwill or something. That's probably a safe call, but I'm worried because, I mean, it looks like the police aren't after me. But again, this could all be a cover. I'm not 100% sure. What if... I, you know, when you say that, Jonas brings forth the newspaper and shows you the article and says, it just seems like you're off the hook. So it would seem, but I don't know if... I'm worried about Lars. I mean, he could be anywhere right now, and if I cause all that chaos, then he could be in danger. He didn't seem like the kind of person that would shoot someone. 
Yeah, but still, a random out-of-towner comes to this little backwater, and someone's assaulted within a couple hours, and they pick up a vagrant in rags. It's gonna raise some eyebrows. At this point, we're all out-of-towners, and we're all vagrants in rags. I can tell you right now, I look around the place, try to get some measure of tracks. I've been tracking people for a long time, and if we'd gone after Lars last night, we might have been able to see where he's going. Now, he could be anywhere in town, and none of us know enough people to make a decision and know where he is. So, first priority is to blend in. After the greed. I mean, I guess... Get close. I've, look deeply uncertain and insecure as I look at the others, and I vigorously nod to Nova. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Let's go, then. Agreed. Okay. Which way, which way is downtown? That way? Um, roughly straight north is the main street, which is the oldest street of Little Brook, and which is well, rough, uh, just a little bit ahead of you from Jones is the strip mall, which some of you might know, some of you might not. The strip mall has a series of small stores in it, but further ahead are the old mom and pop stores. There's a fish and wildlife store, the fishing and wildlife store. There's a uh, electronics repair store. There's a corner store. There's all kinds of small businesses here. And there's a cinema. Uh, fairly close as well, the old city cinema, and at the very end of the main street is the halfway in. So halfway through the street, I guess you would say, is the uh, the um, uh, ba -ba 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 Goodwill, the Goodwill, which was called the Mary Ann's, I believe. Yeah, Mary Ann's. Hey, I finally smile for the first time. The first non Joan time in what seems like forever. They even have the old barber still up here. Really? Yeah, and he's some kind of one of the masons. This is a while ago. But, huh, I guess it's still in them group. Still in that group. Good for them. Yeah. I don't suppose I need a haircut. I'm not getting a haircut. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't have hair. Oh, uh, I go directly into the Goodwill and head for the t-shirt section. Yeah. So you, you get to the Goodwill, which is in this very crammed little store. Um, it's completely filled with things. I would say it's about the size of... Um, I don't know square feet, so I can't really uh, give you a good explanation. But I would say it's about the size of three or four normal cars put together so it's a very small room but the shelves are com there's shelves everywhere okay a little bit bigger than three or four cars maybe eight cars um there's a small counter uh with a woman presumably marianne an older lady who's uh, knitting at the moment she, she looks up and goes welcome welcome everyone oh ooh, my um feel free to browse she she smiles and goes what happened to you folks you were you out in the woods you could say that Yeah. <laughs> there is a lot of things here. Um, it seems that people have been donating to the Goodwill for a couple of years, and there's not a lot of people shopping here. So, essentially, uh, most of you will be able to find clothes that would fit. I'm thinking, Silas, you will find some items of clothing that, while they don't Wait, fit... Sorry. What? Sorry? This is... What happens is that I reach into a bin and pull out a dress shirt. It's the kind of thing that you might wear to an office job. Mm -hmm. And it's clearly for someone who's been very wide. I test the collar, putting it around my neck, buttoning it. It's the kind of thing that can hold a tie. I do the buttons down my chest, one after the other, and it stops. It, the shirt ends over my stomach. Well, yeah. And I look down numbly as I realize the shirt was made for a, a broad man, yes, but one 
more than a foot shorter. This would look embarrassing to go out in unless I went to some sort of drive through where I was on roller skates wearing a crop top. <laughs> Dejected, I take the collar off, pull the shirt off, and drop it back in the bin and start looking through another bin. Tell me, Marianne, I don't is there. Optimistic. Tell me, Marianne, is there a place that you would not like me reaching into? She just looks at you and goes, no, 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 everything here, everything in this room is for sale. Oh, well, except the shelves. Oh, I mean, if you really want to buy the shelves, I suppose you can. Is there, like, a back room or something that you wouldn't want me going into? Uh, I know this is a weird question, but... Well, I mean, you know. I live upstairs. I'd rather you didn't go up there, but... Brilliant. I'm going to run upstairs. If hey! It's unlocked. <laughs> reach into like the closet and then use my ability to pull things out because the loophole is a guarded room and i'm gonna pull out a shirt big enough she 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 gives the rest of you a look silent. like what is he doing can bring him down i'm busy oh you find you find something grown physically and start going up the stairs and i say we have some weird folk ways from back in the day. Um, some people heard of them. And I, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll be right. I sound dumb even to my own ears as I hurry up the stairs and try to see what Nate is doing. Uh, Ma'am, I found this big shirt. Uh, can we buy it from you? It's not a shirt that she owned, right? No, not no, at all. No. I, it's, I use my ability and the loop. She, she, lo out, she no looks way. at you when you come down and she's like, where did you? Did, did you? F oh, wait, it was under you... the bed. Uh, under the? Were you in my room? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, <sighs> she... That's my bad. All right, but... folks. <laughs> I'll pay you whatever, <sighs> double whatever you want for this shirt. She she just shakes her head like, well, I'm, please don't do that again. It won't happen again. You'll have to believe me when I say that it was out of necessity. <sighs> Don't worry, I didn't touch anything else. Everything's as it should be. Well, it better be, or I'm gonna call the uh, the sheriff on you. Okay. So, um, everyone except Silas, or Silas, are you finding anything like a big trench coat or just a very, very big oversized t-shirt, something like that? Like a really washed out Metallica t-shirt or something? I look through bin after bin and finally find a jersey, which is a good news. The bad news is it's not exactly winter wear. It's an NBA jersey. And it says it's a it's bright red and it says Jordan on the back. I love it. It's one dollar. Well, saying, oh, why, thank you. I put the jersey, I take off, I let the rags, the gross and dirty rags finally fall and wrap it in my arms before taking the jersey and pulling it over my body and just sign it to Tedman. Guys, who's Jordan? Oh, Silas, if you need a button down, I found one for you. Thank you, man, thank you. Ah. <sighs> And I'm going to go for a look that's kind of like almost like yuppie-ish, like a button-down shirt, some khakis. If I can find a messenger bag, that would be brilliant. Um, yeah, you dig around and you find what you're looking for after a while. It seems that, in, in essence, most everything you need uh, would be here. And... Um, once you're done, it ends up costing you somewhere in the ballpark of uh, 40, 45 dollars, wow. all in all. It's still pretty cheap, but it's been here for a while. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. All right. Well, um, you're a weird bunch, but uh, hope you'll have some use for the clothes. If you want to get changed, I suppose you can use the back room. I've definitely not been nibbling on any sweaters, by the way. 
are you are you, <laughs> are you saying that out loud or is that just a statement that <laughs> Just, just a statement if anyone looked over. I was yeah. just looking at him like really, really closely, yeah. is all. Man, this uh, this is some good quality wool right here. You can't <laughs> find that in everywhere. Um, yeah, it's pretty, yeah. pretty good. I'm taking that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's this big old sweater that seems to fit you well. It's kind of, or is it that furry thing that you're wearing in the picture? Ah, yeah. perfect, perfect. <laughs> oh, that one's been in the bin for years, honey. Are you sure you want that? Does that thing have holes? Uh, it's fashion. I ah. love it. All right, very well. Um, uh, all right, well, fine. Um, like, like I said, $45 for everyone, or are you paying separately? No, we can, we can pay together. I give her the bill. Okay. <laughs> I think like a black hoodie, zip-up hoodie. Uh, also looking at some kind of messenger bag, some kind of bag that I can use. Um, did I have like a flask or something that I can find that I can also close? It's The, the Goodwill has almost exclusively clothes and a okay, few bags. Yeah. No, no, no shoes. water bottles. Are there, are there some decent there shoes that I can buy? There are shoes, but there's really not a huge amount of options but um okay nothing with heels please because i mean there's plenty of loafers there's sneakers there's some high heels there's uh, the whole gamut essentially but sizes uh, you find something that kind of fits but it's definitely not what you'd pick if you were in a proper shoe store in That's fact okay. i none of you find anything that fits exactly your taste and style and size you can go for two of those but not the third. I'm just fine with size and like right. utility. Yeah. So like some kind of sneakers, I guess. You you find a pair of Converse that have been tie dyed in bright neon colors. Oh geez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. I reach down and pull up some brown shoes, and I say, Yeah, I mean they're big enough, but. I waved them experimentally. They flop yeah. like giant long hot dogs. <clears throat> no, it's uh, is this business life? Uh, I mean, if they fit, they're better than not wearing shoes at all. So I'd go with them. I take a harder look. I remember. I remember the days of the past and. Even through the fog of Arcadia, I realize these are clown shoes. <laughs> oh, and you no. really don't have a choice because there are no shoes <laughs> in this entire Goodwill that come close to fitting me. They... I sigh and I put the clown shoes on. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they, they honk with every step you take. Oh, no. I hope we don't have to sneak anywhere. <laughs> You take what you can. Oh, honey, Yo you can Jonas have those for just... free. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, Jonas. Yeah. Jonas is just looking for like plain, discreet clothes that doesn't fit him terribly. Just trying to have have something that can blend in with a hood and a cap. As I mean, as sl slightly oversized hoodies and uh, sure. jeans, you can find there's like a river of those. If you open yeah. out one of the closets, just pouring out on top of you, you get your yeah. pick. Um, so uh, you all find what you need, more or less. And with the shoes, you're paying around uh, ninety dollars for everything. She she gives you a little bit of a discount since you're all buying so much. Um, Although you're pretty sure when you look at the price tag said you would have been paying this much anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh. So, um... I sound like this. <laughs> as this goes on, um... Lars, you arrive at this three-story building, which I do believe, you've, believe you know, because it was constructed about ten-ish years before you were taken. It was one of the many new buildings constructed after the Second World War. 
all done by this European architect. You're not sure of his name, but he designed the city hall, he designed the library, he designed the police station or the fire station and sheriff's department, essentially. A, a bunch of other things too. And also, apparently, he's the guy who designed the uh, sewer system of the town, so productive guy. Um, but the fire station, the police station, or whatever you want to call it, ha is, is this red brick building. And that's really the call sign of this architect. Almost everything is done in these red, reddish brown bricks, terracotta bricks. And you can see the rather large one and a half, two story uh, opening for where the fire car or fi fire truck would go out. And um, you see also the official, the front entrance and um, the uh, woman or rather Barton, Officer Barton or Deputy Barton. She drives into the garage of the, um, of the house and she motions for you to step out. And she's putting on the, the uh, deputy's hat again and just goes, all right, so I know this is going to sound not nice to hear, but we do have some cells in the basement. We got bunks in them. Most of them have been converted to filing cabinets. Yeah, I know. It's not exactly normal we get people staying the night here, but there's a couple of bunks if you need any, you and your friends, whatever they are. And please don't tell me they're out there causing chaos because I cannot deal with that. And we also have some old clothes, lost, forgotten, stuff like that from visitors, museum visits, jackets. Nothing fancy, but probably got something that could fit you. And once you're done, just go up to the top floor. I'll be there filing for 30 minutes, getting my caffeine shots and then I'm off again so you got 30 minutes and then I'll drive you to the library oh okay. um I'm really sorry this is the welcoming party because I know you've been through shit I, I know I was but right now I I don't know what to say you folks you'll you'll understand what Matthew tells you but Ah, stuff is on my mind. Okay, I'm I'm really sorry. I I'll I'll buy you a cake. I'll buy all of you a cake. So, what do you want to have? Dr Pepper, Pepsi, Pepsi Max. We got all that. We got Seven Up. Just gives her a blank look. All right. Cool. Go downstairs. Get something to wear. Come upstairs. Get me. I'll get you to the library. Okay. Good. We're, so, we're good. We're good. 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 I won't right. run. Okay. Welcome back to Littlebrook, Larson. Oh my God! I hope this is gonna turn out okay. And she she gets into the elevator actually and goes up to the top floor. Uh, so Lars would go downstairs and dig through the clothes, mm -hmm. find stuff that mostly fits him probably just jeans and a, a flannel and some yeah. boots if possible yeah you find uh, jeans and flannel easily enough but shoes funnily enough it seems people are less prone to forgetting their shoes so you find a pair of checkered loafers and um, they're about a, two sizes too big for you but that's pretty much all you can use at the moment then that's what he'll wear. Check your loafers, it is. <coughs> it, the cells then, down here, by the way, um, are they each have okay. a little window. There's six of them in total, and four of them have these stacks of items. They have filing cabinets. Uh, some of them have potted plants in them, and you're pretty sure one of them has been refurbished into a small office space. One bunk bed is still, you know, actually a bed and not just a flat piece of board. And it seems it's been used mostly for like break time. There's a, you know, the water cooler in there. And uh, yeah, this jail has not seen use in a long time. Okay. Um, just want to take stock of kind of what's available down here um as lars always does looking forward keeping track of 
what kind of items are around. Mm -hmm. um, he spent years retrieving lost items, so things that are easily removed are something that usually catches his eye. There and is... Oh, sorry. Sorry. He won't spend a lot of time, just kind of give a quick cursory glance, taking stock of everything and getting a kind of a inventory in his head in case he needs to build a tank. <laughs> there <laughs> is a... Uh... I mean, with a creative enough mind, you could definitely use some things in here for maybe not a tank, but um, howitzer maybe. <laughs> but uh, you, um, they're not keeping out an awful lot of tools and stuff like that down here, uh, presumably because they might need to evacuate the cells at some point in case someone is being unruly or stuff like that. So there's not a lot of hard items, definitely not a lot of metallic items. The filing cabinets are pretty big, but they're full, so maybe you could topple them over someone? That's the most you could use them as weapons. Honestly... Plus, what? Sorry? Plus, if they're actually aware of the Fae and aware of the contracts, they don't want to keep anything too obviously able to be turned to a weapon down there. Yeah, it's... Uh, potentially that. That could be the reason it's looking like this, but, um... I mean, there's stuff. You could make things but that would really depend on how much time you had and uh, mm. how much you'd be willing yeah. to dig through piles okay and then he yeah. will go up to the third floor and find, uh... sorry what and he'll go to the third floor and okay. find deputy Barton. all right um you take the elevator up or do you walk stairs stairs uh, so you go up the stairs, you realize that there's actually four floors in this house. Well, three and a half. There's like a half... Half of the third floor is there. Presumably the remaining is actually used by the um, fire truck area. You don't, you're not quite sure. Um, but it's a small museum on the third floor. Second floor is the fire department and the top floor is the sheriff's department. And you enter and you see this small office space. It's really normal. That That's the thing that hits you the first. There's like nothing special about it at all. There are no swords, no flaming uh, land, uh, torches. There are no, there's no dungeon. The walls are typical plaster. There's a few paintings hanging. There's a hang in there, kitty hanging from a tree. Um, I mean... It could essentially be from a cop drama in the... Well, I don't even know if they had cop dramas in the 60s. It's certainly... They did. Oh, they did, yeah. Police Academy yeah. style. Yeah. Drag that. Yeah. So, so you, for you, it's like this wave of... Nostalgia would be a weird thing to say because it's definitely more modern than anything you're used to. You, you're seeing what you assume are a bunch of television screens put on desks. Apparently, people really value watching TV here, uh, and they seem to have a very big budget for it. But it seems like a normal kind of office, and you see the deputy sitting by her desk and actually typing on a flat t uh, typewriter, but there's no paper in it. Wait a minute, 60s? <clears throat> you've probably... This is difficult. They probably would have had... Well, they might have had electric typewriters, but... Yeah, yeah, but definitely not keyboards at that time. No. No. So it might be an electrical typewriter, but it doesn't seem to be any paper in it, which is weird. So Lars would probably just clear his throat to get her attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. There we go. Nice shoes. Good pick. She, uh, she just kind of gets up from her chair and it's more clear now that you have had some time to take it in you know that um, Nova is a part animal you've noticed that but Nova is much more subtle this is um, Barton looks like like she doesn't have fur but there's definitely like patches of, of color across her skin that looks like she's dappled and um she could probably take Silas in a wrestling, arm wrestling contest now that you're 
you're getting a good look of it. She looks like a, she's built like a like a brick house, and um, she just gives a little shrug and goes for a hat again, and goes, "Okay, so we're going to the library. Uh, we're gonna go see Matthew. <sighs> Maybe the principal after that. And once we're done with all that, I'm gonna." <sighs> Well, I'm gonna try to find your friends, and we're gonna have to find some place for you guys to stay, and work, and then we need to debrief you, and honestly... Just, just go with the flow, okay? Okay, Lars, I know this is a lot, I know you're probably feeling a little bit messed up right now, and I understand that. But we got a way of doing things here in Littlebrook, and so far you've been doing great, I appreciate it. Uh, but maybe tell your friend who shot the fetch not to do that anymore. Please? I'll try. Thank you. And then you're gonna have to tell me about the dragon. And honestly, I get it, it's not your fault, but... We gotta deal with that, because in case... This thing was this big area around here. She points to the forest, which is literally everywhere um, outside in the windows. This is flammable. <laughs> so, industry, wood, you know, everything like that, very important for the town. Um, so, dragon, top priority. Okay, we're, we're square. We got that. Perfect. Thank you, Lars. You are a true champ. Let's go to the library. <laughs> You'll follow her Man, up. we really, yeah. really screwed up her morning, huh? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, she's doing the best of it. She's trying to do the best of it anyway. Um. So, unfortunately, Lars, I'm gonna have to go back to the other group again, but we'll soon be rejoining each other. I hope. We'll see. And actually. The five of you, uh, are you getting dressed here in the store? Using the uh, spare room in the back? Yeah. 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 So, roughly when four of you are done, you hear the doorbell ring and a person comes in. And Nova, you hear a voice you haven't heard in a long time. And you can't place it right away. But when you hear the, oh, come on. You know exactly who it is. And she doesn't look like she's aged that much, considering things. It's your old friend Amanda from the club. But she's 10, 15 years older. At least looks like it. She's aged very well. And as you look over, you realize... There's two. No, just like when you saw the Nate thing... And how it shifted from a normal face to something else. This th same thing happens with Aman Amanda. 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 But it's not the same. She looks very much like herself. But she's much, much thinner. She looks emaciated almost. She's very, very thin. And she has these uh, long, kind of pointy ears. They're definitely longer than, than they used to be. She has these big uh, kind of black eyes, very kind of elfin features. Um, and she's wearing this really, honestly, very beautiful handcrafted uh, dress, which is made out of like woven green. It has green and light blue and all kinds of colors woven went into it. And a kind of a stripy pattern that Honestly, it's a bit tacky. It reminds you of Christmas stuff. Uh, but she's she's killing it. Like she's looking pretty good with it. And she looks over at you and just she just meows. Yeah. Unexpected. <laughs> yeah. Wilma, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> she has the That's best great. timing. She <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, please don't cry anymore, Wilma. We're almost, we're, we're more than halfway through. Uh, she doesn't like it when we're in different rooms. For those of you new to the stream, it's a cat. We have two cats. So, she looks over at you and she drops her purse. 
she's scratching the bowl now, and just stares at you. And she goes, oh my god. Oh my god. What are you doing here? I think I, 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 I go just a, a little closer and I just go, Amanda? Y yes. Y y yeah, yeah. What? I don't... You just left. You left town. I... No, it was that night when we went, when we le went looking. I, I got lost and then I was gone. Nadine, no, you, you didn't get lost. I don't, oh my God. It happened. Of course it happened. Oh God. She, you see Marianne is just looking very, very confused. She's like, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you, should I, should I go? <laughs> I don't think I'm paying attention. I think I, I, uh, kind of put out a hand and see if she'll take mine and all of a sudden I go, what about Jimmy? Jimmy, he's, he's still here. He's working for the mayor. Uh, oh my god. I don't... Nadine. Nadine, it's it's so good to see you. I'm... How did you... How did you go through the... the, the, the curse? I don't... I don't... I don't remember everything. I just know that we were running and and I just I, I just found here and everything is jumbled and I haven't heard Nadine in a very long time. Well Oh my god, I have to take you to see the principal. How I, how I are you though? Oh my god, did you just get I here? I was uh, it was last night. Last night? And she looks over and she spots everyone else and she's just like, oh my god, there's five of you? Uh, yeah. No, there's six, actually. Uh, 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 she she doesn't seem to know what to say. She's just completely, like... Jonas is awestruck. trying to... When, when she, she speaks of, like, taking us somewhere, Jonas is trying to just, like, blend into the back and look for, for exits. Okay. Nearby. Do you want to roll stealth for that? Like, are you trying to hide from from this, uh, Amanda? Sure. Okay. I, roll I will roll wits and composure. Learning. Jonas is social. <laughs> that is one success for me. I think. And two for me. And how many? Three. Two. two. Yeah two. yeah, two. So, Jonas, you just kind of blend in with the, with the piles and piles of oversized hoodies and t-shirts and just kind of disappear. Um, the rest of you, what do you do? She's, she's very, very stunned looking, like... So she's a... She's a changeling, not a fetch, right? She, she, she's a changeling. Um, okay. She does... She looks still very human. She looks... Like how, well, Jonas and uh, Tide, if you watch The Lord of the Rings, which I do believe that Jonas, you've seen the first movie, um, she looks very much like the, um, the uh, well, actually, those of you alive in the 80s probably saw the animated Lord of the Rings, too. Yep. So, so <laughs> kind of like that, but... Hey, it's a pretty good movie. That thing was amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, except for the live action actors who got a. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and it just suddenly. Uh... End. Sorry, getting off track. Uh, she's emaciated, so she's very, very thin. I like to the point where if she wasn't wearing this dress, you would probably be able to see her ribs. Um, you can see the bones in her arms. She doesn't seem to be sick or anything like that, but she has these very sharp features. Those of you who were living in the garden recognize some of this, like her pitch black eyes, her elfin features, her stark red lips, and her coal black hair rings a lot of bells, however, but not the same. In the same ballpark, but definitely not 
her. All right. I'm yeah. a little cautious, but I'll entertain it. Who's this principal? She uh, she looks at you and goes, well, uh, well, it's uh, Miss Blackbird, of course. Uh, I'll look. She just covers her mouth. Okay. Um, proper procedure is I take you to see Matthew. Oh my God. They are going to be so pissed. Uh, how, how did you break this? Did, how did you get here? Oh my God. Well, uh, 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 Silas speaks at first. Basically, uh, we evaded the people coming to get us, then crossed through the hedge. Uh, uh, we had to deal with the dragon. It kind of flew off somewhere. Yeah. And uh, she yeah, she she just kind of holds here. up her hand and and kind of just points to Marianne, who's still sitting there knitting, and goes, "Oh, don't mind me. This is one of those LARPs young people are doing these days." <laughs> What's a LARP? I asked with obvious confusion. Oh, I know where that is. It's like when you grow out and you pretend to be in a fantasy world, kind of like, and you like dress up and stuff. And 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 Amanda, Amanda just goes, yeah, th that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> we're LARPers. Uh, come on, we gotta go kill some orcs. I think. All I'm right. ready to follow her. I'm okay. gonna follow. follow. Okay. You're off to kill some orcs, some rotoscoped orcs. I immediate, I immediately brightened up and followed her. Yeah. Finally, something I can do. <laughs> um, you get outside the store, Jonas. Are you following behind, or are you staying in the store? I'm I look, staying in the store. I I step on the doorstep and like start looking around, Jonas. <laughs> He's gone. Well, you can actually roll your wits. Uh, um, uh, I, I always want to say wits awareness, but it's it wits and composure. Wits and, right? wits and composure, yes, to see if you can spot him. Anyone who's looking for Jonas can roll that. Oh, I'll give it a try too. Sure. Let's keep together. Wits and composure. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, no, this is an eight. Okay. Uh, eight and above, or eight and above, yes. And, Two uh, successes. Yeah. What does so that mean? We're going to assume that this is say against the same role that Jonas rolled before. That seems to make be fair. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So, awesome. Ty, you spot him camouflaged amongst the hoodies and t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds hilarious. <laughs> I mean, considering where you are, if he wasn't. I mean, he's barely moving. Like he seems, he looks very much like one of those uh, um, Mannequin. mannequins. Mannequins. <laughs> I, I like walk over. Like, what's wrong? Well, I don't want to just follow this stranger someplace I don't know. Okay, that's fair. But, but okay, well. But the others are going. I don't really trust them either. With this, I, I, did she, did she say where you were, where they were going? She just said the. Uh, she said she had to take you to see Matthew. Oh, um, the Ma Matthew. Okay. Yeah. Which and she said Do that he would. Matthew? They they would be very pissed. You it doesn't actually yeah maybe roll intelligence something to oh, see if you oh can yeah. remember. My oh, best trait. I do believe there's Not. a specific thing for remembering stuff. A specific check for that. So I mean, and resolve or composure, I think, with intelligence, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I believe you're right about that, but I'm just gonna look it up uh, because I do want to memorize these rules. Memorizing is the intelligence composure, so I guess. But this is remembering, not memorizing. Yeah, you're right. 
So how about rolling a plain intelligence check? No, it has to be two That's of them. That's gonna go so well. No, intelligence composure. Intelligence composure. Yeah, your two best both sets. Of us are just tied. Anyone who's trying, actually, both of you, but no one else. Two successes. Okay. Four successes. Oof. Ooh. Yeah, you remember Matthew? He's a um, he's the town libra librarian. He moved to Littlebrook uh, in uh, I would say uh, early nineties, and he took over as librarian in the uh, like ninety six maybe. And the library is one of these buildings that were built in the 50s, you think? 50s, 40s, 50s? One of those red brick buildings. It's a cylinder-shaped building that actually goes down a bit into the ground. And it has four uh, small rooms at the corners of the cylinder. But obviously a cylinder doesn't have corners, but essentially it's a very interesting kind of building. No, no, but but like in every cardinal direction, there is a yeah. little, little like uh, like extra stuff. That is library, maybe. Yeah, uh, sure. Yes, I've never been there, but okay. but but yeah, it, it actually looks like the Stockholm City City Library if you want a comparison. So it's like um, it's a square building with a cylinder in the middle, with uh, little annexes, I guess you'd call them, on the sides. And I'll... yeah, sorry. I'll, I'll tell Ty, if mm. I heard her talking about Matthews, I think they are going to the library. I, if you go there, I'll I'll go there my, myself and just try to see what's going on from the outside and maybe get you out if need be. If something goes wrong, I can kill them. <laughs> just like that. Well, <laughs> she seems to be like us. Maybe she can kill people back okay but there's a lot of us that's true it's Amanda's kind of Amanda's kind of glancing at uh, Nova like are they is your friend coming or hey, uh, I just met him yesterday I don't know okay, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go I'll go with you Tide. okay it just turns around and walks yeah. out so the last two join you Post Oh, sorry. Waves, waves goodbye to the shopkeeper. She waves bye to. Good luck with the LARP. Um, kill thank lots thank of orcs, you. I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. You uh, start heading down. Uh, actually, yeah, you head to um, to the east towards the town center, which is where you'd find the city hall, the uh, Broadmeadow, Broadmeadow Apartments, the uh, uh, Four Seasons Hotel, and the City Library. Amanda looks very troubled. Like she's she's she seems to want to start a conversation a bunch of times, but then she kind of checks herself and she goes, "Um, Nadine, really happy to see you. Um, really sorry about the whole." Arcadia and the hedge thing. I'm sure it wasn't fun. I remember it wasn't fun for me. I just gotta ask, though. Be honest with me. How did you break the curse? Wait, shit. She covers her mouth. Never mind. Let's keep going. No, 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 no. What I, curse? I, I, I gotta reach out and I touch her hand. And I'm like, Amanda, I don't understand what you're saying. No, 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 no. I, I, I was confused. No, no. How, how did you get here? Is, is what I meant to ask. Amanda, what are you keeping from me? Nothing. No, no. It's really nothing. Amanda, I have a very finely tuned bullshit detector, and it is just pinging off the charts right now. So she looks a little bit disturbed by your crystalline appearance and and uh, a little intimidated and she just goes okay well matthew can tell you everything look i don't know half of it don't tell them i told you this but there hasn't been anything from arcadia or the hedge in 17 years here you're the first ones to show up. 
Hmm. And I'm kind of freaking out because you're not supposed to be here. I'm very happy that you are. Like, oh my god, I'm so sorry what happened to you guys. But this is not good news, I think. So, I have a question. Why are we in trouble? You Did said you said they were going to be mad at us. Like we didn't do it. Well, I said they were. I said they're going to be mad. Anything. I didn't say they were going to be mad at you. Yeah. I, they're going to be mad, mad, because something's wrong. You're not supposed to be able to come here. I can't tell you anymore. I promise not to tell anymore. You know I can't tell you anymore. If I tell you anymore, I'm, bad things are going to happen. Okay, right. but if we're gonna get yelled at, then, you know, I want to know why. I literally cannot tell you that. <laughs> Look at that rolls their eyes, like... I think I get in between them a little, like I feel a little protective of Amanda. Hmm. And I'm almost like, just like, almost comforting her, like, it's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, okay? Yeah, let's let's hurry on. And you realize you've stopped outside of a boarded up building, which is a very strange thing to see in this town. Um, there's a small garden in front of it. It looks very nice. If it wasn't for the fact that the windows and the door are boarded up, it's got a little garden. There's some chairs. There are a few trees. It's a nice place, but it's not open. It's like, like a corner place. And Nova, you see, even before you see the sign, which is faded with time, you realize this is to the last drop, the cafe you guys used to hang at when you were, well, back in the 80s. Is, is Amanda, this, what's, what, it, is this, is it still, what is it? What is I? It's been. I am. Um, oh shit! Um, lost. No, no, it's fine. Look, um, sorry we took this way. I didn't. I wasn't thinking. It's fine. It's okay. This they they just closed down. There was there weren't enough customers. It happened in. I don't know. It happened before I came back here. Um, everyone's okay. Like nothing bad happened. Uh, we can talk about it later, maybe. But right now we really got to go to the library. Uh, and she takes up this this device, which has a screen on it, and she actually op she presses a button a button, and then she starts typing on like a on the screen to someone. She just keeps going and leads you towards the library. Do you follow? I yeah. do. Yep. Yeah. And through the magic of role playing games. You arrive roughly at the same time as Lars does. You see a squad, <coughs> or not a squad car, but a patrol car parked, just parked. The engine is just turning off. And stepping out of it is a woman, tall, broad, strong looking. She's got blonde hair, which is kind of thick and pulled back into a, into a braid. Uh, she has, which... I guess, Lars, you've noticed now as well, she's got lots of freckles across her face. She's got something more akin to a muzzle. Um, some kind of human Clydesdale mix. And she just <sighs> lifts her hat and looks extremely troubled by the sight of you. And you see Lars. Start saving me some time. Those are my friends. You don't have to go find them now. <sighs> Perfect. That's actually very good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Cobbler, how uh, you found the new arrivals, I see. And and Amanda just goes, well, found. I ran into them. I didn't even know. Like, why didn't you call me? And um, the officer goes, call you what were you supposed to do you were sleeping this is my job i'm in charge of cleanup and and uh, amanda goes well i mean cleanup of what this has never happened before this it's 17 years and and the officer goes Shh. i've i spoken with matthew he'll be here any second he'll explain it to them 
All right, you five, six. Yes. I don't like the sound of the word clean up. What's that supposed to mean? Are you going to kill us? Why would I want she to kill you? I don't know. We've been told to go I, to, this, I can, I can to the library. And now, I don't know, you're talking about clean up and you're being all secretive and look, no evidence against us. Like, look, Tide. She helped me. She could have arrested me. She didn't. She clothed me. And she has so far provided me with useful information in trade for me being truthful with her. She's obviously one of us, so I think we should go with them and find out as much information as we can to make any decisions. Okay. Ars, but... you are really, you're doing good. She <laughs> says... I'm Deputy Patty Barton. Nice to meet you. She holds out her uh, hand. I don't want to, like, I just, I'm just asking here. He, sure. and I, I point to Silas, and like, he was technically one of us, and he was supposed to bring us back. You're talking about cleanup now. Like, how are we supposed to know that you're not going to shove us back through the hedge? She, uh, we're she, not going back without a fight. She gives Silas a look over and goes, I, um, well, big guy, it's true, were you uh, working for one of them, the gentry? Sorry. I look a little bit gloomy as I realize that, no, we're not probably going to be fighting orcs, but I recover and look back at <laughs> her. I recover as I look back at her. All of us were working for them in some capacity or the other. You got a point but there. But now, I mean, now... I'm making a choice, like everyone else. I realize that I don't cut the most imposing figure in an NBA jersey, a very large pair of shorts, and some clown shoes. <laughs> but, and I draw myself up to my full height, which is a six foot eight man who is very, very muscular, if so much fat. And I say, but we're ready to help out in town and see what you and Matthew and everyone else need. She nods. Well, shit, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. He's got a point. All of us were working for them. It's definitely not something I'm going to hold against you all. Lars already knows none of you are going to none of you are going to be pr in prison. None of you are going to be convicted of any crimes. From what I can tell, you guys arrived here last night, and shit, I don't know where or when you're from, except that Lars here, he's uh, well, I mean, from a long time ago. I brought you here, and Amanda brought you here, Cobbler, as she as we call her. We brought you here because Matthew is the. Uh, I guess you'd call him the scholar of the group. He is the one who's been researching things the most, and if anyone could answer your questions, and he could, and I've got some questions for him myself. I'm gonna have to bring you to the principal after this, but I mean, she's not gonna be happy, but we don't punish you. It's really not our job. We'd punish you if you were out here killing people, if you were committing crimes, stealing, murdering, if you were here to bring us back, but uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> looks pointedly at. <laughs> I looks at Nate too, like everyone Everybody looks at uh, Nate. Do fetches count as people? In Littlebrook, they do, but everyone gets a mulligan. <laughs> but if I knew I got a mulligan, I would have shot straight. Or not. Listen, that must mean you're Nate. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, Nate. We're going to have a longer talk about how we do things here in Lillibrook. But I'm pretty sure you noticed time's passed since you were here. I mean, it's pretty hard for me to tell how old you are. But you definitely don't look like he does. And he's got a life. He's an upstanding member of the... Well, he's a member of the community. And, uh... You can't go around shooting people. Nate, 
That's not how we do things here. He took everything from me. He didn't take shit from you. They took everything from you. He probably doesn't even know that he's not you. I know it sucks to hear that, but I mean, you, you yeah. and you and Matthew can sit down, and he will tell you everything he knows about these fetches. He's been studying them for years, but the truth of the matter is, he's as much you as well. He thinks he's as much you as you think. And honestly, after the many years you've spent in Arcadia, maybe he is more you than you are. No offense. I had to deal with this shit when I came back too, but I was lucky. My I, I'm not from Littlebrook, originally. All right. I suppose I can call a ceasefire for now. Thanks. It's really all I can ask for. And I mean, things will work out. We'll get you folks set up with some place to live, some work. You can ground yourself, start to process, start to heal. But for now, we really need to talk to Matthew. Um, he's he's in there. She nods her head Let's to the go. library. Let's go. Quickly interject. Hey, Miss Penny, is, is that the name? Uh, Petty. Petty, yes. Yeah, Barton, Deputy Petty. Barton, if you want to be formal. Do you, do you, need, do you need another officer? I look up with sudden hope in my eyes. <laughs> she, uh... She smiles and kind of gives a little shrug. Well, sorry, big guy. This, I mean, aside from what happened last night, Little Brook's the safest place in Minnesota. It's been for 17 years. The worst crime we've had is shoplifting. So, sure, I could house you for a little while, but I don't think we got a job for you. I'll check with I'll check with the sheriff, but can't give you any promises. My body slumps like a mountain taking a breather. Oh, well, it was, uh, it was like that back in the old days, too. Tell, most t part. tell you what, though. There's a dragon in the forest. Now, I don't know which one of y'all brought the dragon with you. In my opinion, it's a collective thing. Lars points at Silas. Well, that yeah, makes things yeah. much easier. Silas, Silas, I kind of just pinched my fingers together a little bit. <laughs> Look, <laughs> technically you're not even supposed to be here. There, there are things in motion that shouldn't let you come through. You did. Something must have backfired and that dragon came through. I Again, mulligan. That's not even going to count as a mulligan. But that dragon needs to be dealt with. So once this is all done, the principal has given the thumbs up. I'm going to give you guys some stuff, whatever we can give you, and you're going dragon hunting. But that's going to be for later. I think. I hope. I haven't seen any forest fires. She just kind of glances over to the northern forests. I mean... Worst case scenario, might have gone to Canada, and you know, it's not our not our problem anymore. I hope. And it never worked out that well before. I looked to her. This is a very large look, not quite as big as me, but close enough as to make a difference. I narrow my eyes and kind of look at her. So there's others of us here. Who's the strongest one? That'll be Jim, but you won't be seeing much of him. He keeps to himself. Jim, he's, I he's, say he's, thoughtfully, my voice rumbling. Yeah, yeah, he's a bit like you, to be honest. More of the, uh, well, I say more of the mossy kind, but same, same sort of uh, physique, I guess you'd call it. All right. Well, got any more questions? that Matthew can't answer because I'm pretty sure he, he's got it. He's got things more on under check than I do. And honestly, I've been spending most of the night driving around town, so... If... I hate to take your time, but... But you're I... going to take it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I look to the others. I don't know if they feel the same urgency as I do for this one. <clears throat> when I left... The Reds just launched that satellite into the air, Sputnik. That's 
just a couple years before, maybe. That's what, uh, back in the 50s. Yeah. yeah. What? How's the world changed <laughs> since then? I, my words come out like they're covered in molasses. Like I'm trying to ask a question that I don't even know what the impact could be. Well, um, tell you what. Matthew is a much better person to tell you that. He'll show you some rover footage. And we'll start with that. Rover? I uh, asked you. Yeah, with Mars. You'll 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 find out. It's we sent we sent some robot or something to Mars. I don't know. It Look, I'm not in, exactly a student of history. Things have changed. Not a lot for the better, to be honest, but I don't even think it was good back in the 50s either. Good news, no imminent nuclear war, though. Knock on wood. I somehow relaxed at the sound of that. No more war. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, that's real good. no more war with the uh, Russians anymore, anyway. Well, for now, I don't... Look, um... The library is free, you know. <laughs> Just how about we let Deputy Barton get back to? Yeah, the I, I'd oh, love to. Sorry. I'll lend here. She, she, she takes out her wallet and gives you a library card. Use mine. Borrow whatever you want. All of you, <laughs> books, magazines, whatever. There's a 15 book limit, but Matthew will set you up with more. Take whatever you need. Read up. I need to go sleep. All right. Thank you, Deputy. I'm not of course, there. it's my duty. Nice. And she just goes back to the uh, to the patrol car, sits in it, and just kind of leans back in the driver's seat. And you see, like she pulls down her her hat over her eyes. <laughs> She's had a long night. And you step into the library. Why? Why we? Oh, sorry. In, I yeah. walk past Silas and just like look up at him and say. We went to the moon, and then I continued past him. Oh my god, yeah. that's true. I look, I look a little surprised. I look not that surprised, honestly. And I say, well, you get a rover on Mars, you get a rover on the moon, all right? I guess. Oh yeah, and Pluto blew up. What? Oh. Amanda just <laughs> what? When did that happen? Uh, what? No, wait, I, cu I couldn't have known that, could I? That was before. Pluto that hasn't was... blown up. Has it blown up? <laughs> no, it no, was just no, declared no. not a planet, yeah, I believe. Oh. Oh, right. oh, so, okay. Uh, <laughs> leave Pluto alone and had it gone. I was like, Pluto's... when did you learn this, and why did you not <laughs> tell me this? this? I feel like that would I'm be sorry. big fucking news. <laughs> Is there a Twitter alert I missed? I was like, holy shit, everyone goes for their phones. Uh, no, but yeah, Pluto's not a planet anymore, but you, I don't think you'd know that, I don't no. Think I, no, I don't think I'd know that, I'm sorry. 2001, but not a lot happened with space at that time. Um, Amanda actually I... goes, we've got a photo of a black hole. Wait, what? Is yeah. Just... Okay, let... Should we talk to this? this we just guy? go yeah. talk to this guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're all standing on this. Um, is it? No, it's not called a patio. Like a gravel pathway, a little yeah. little pathway yeah. to to the library. There are. Sidewalk. It's a garden. It seems that a lot of uh, little brook. It has very very well kept gardens. Um, the frost is still kind of lingering on the grass, lingering even, um, but it. It, for August, it strikes you now. For August, it's pretty cold. Like, not, you know, not winter cold, but it's definitely not as warm as it should be in August. Frost in August? That's really weird. Yep. Yeah. And I you, shiver you know, bigly in my sports gear. And your clown hot, shoes. But... Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Ooh. Yeah, um, yeah, you're, you're cold, Silas. You're, you're, um, but... On the other hand, you have fairly thick skin, so... I got a sweater. Yeah. I was smart. Yeah. So you head inside, and there's this small reception area with a desk, one of those large TV monitor things with the electronic typewriters. Um, 
there are four rooms. So essentially, I guess you could say that this main building is square and that going slightly up and below is the cylinder in the middle of the room. So there's like a walkway in a square around with shelves in two floors on just this floor. So you can actually go up a staircase and there are more books. Um, two of these rooms have several computers lining them. So several TV monitors for those of you not familiar with the computers. Uh, one room has these uh, blinds pulled close, closed and one, one of them is actually split into two smaller kind of seminar slash meeting rooms. And in the middle of the room is this circular uh, pit, which is where the cylinder goes down, and there are um, twin staircase going down to this pit. So most of you have been here once or twice, so this is not new, but it looks almost untouched by time. And on this bottom floor, there are uh, rows on the sides, rows of books, just like above. But in the middle of the floor, there's this large painting in a circle on the floor. Um, and there is a circular window um, in the wall, like a, a slightly bent circular, win circular window, where the light sometimes will hit the painting. It's not doing it right now, because technically the, it's just early morning. Uh, but it's, it's just coming down from the, from the window, some light. And uh, downstairs you also know that there are restrooms, things like that, underneath the staircase. And honestly, it's it's a cozy library, if a little bit too rich for the Little Brook blood. It's definitely something you'd find more in a fairy tale than in a town like this. There's no one around, by the way. So the sounds of your footsteps against the marble floor is making a lot of noise. Is it just us six or, or, uh, or is it... Well, a Amanda is coming in t with you too. So this Matthew, is he a librarian? Yep. Yes, he was... Um, Jonas remembered him. Yeah, yeah, he was he was librarian when when I was here last time, uh, 20 years ago, but I... Yeah, but it less. Do um, you know of him? No. I, I I would I think I'd recognize him, but um, I don't I, I don't know him. Yeah. He was um, he was always a little bit weird. He was like this kind of um, academic, I guess you'd say. Like uh, he'd wear a bow tie, tweed suit, uh, small round glasses, very neatly combed hair, clean shaven, quiet guy, librarian obviously. But he would have uh, story time with the local children, whoever wanted to come, uh, every Saturday, and they'd sit in a ring around this floor painting, which you realize doesn't actually look the same as when you were there as children, um, or when you were there before you were taken. Now it's actually showing this um, this forest of birch trees uh, with a pale blue sky above it and frosted grass beneath. There's like no other motif, just this birch tree forest. I kind of stop in front of the painting and like, I, this, this looks like the forest that we were in, look. I just kind of- like the forest we just came out of. Yeah, I walked through it and I tried to touch the painting, even though that's that's not a good idea, but... It's on the floor, right? Yeah, it's on the floor, you said. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, paint, it's a circular painting on the floor. So it's almost, in a way, it kind of almost looks like a hole down into this forest. Um, the, the floor of the forest is towards you from the entrance, and the sky is towards the window. All right. I try to touch it. Is it? Does it? So you walk down the stair to the uh, staircase to the um, to the painting. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, it's just a painting. Nothing special happens when you touch it. I tap it with my foot a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I don't... <laughs> Are you looking to get back? A voice speaks to you 
from amongst the bookshelves. I'm terribly sorry. I'm Matthew. Sorry for keeping you waiting. I was sorting some books. You're new arrivals here, aren't you? Yes, we are. Well, I do recognize some of your faces. Well, slightly some of your faces. Some of you might recognize me as well. And he comes out. And he doesn't quite look the way he used to look, Matthew. He's still wearing the same tweed suit. You'd swear, those of you from 2001, that he hasn't even gotten a new one. It's, it's immaculate, of course. Not a thread out of place. Um, he's got the bow tie, which is um, uh, in a kind of paisley sort of style, which clashes magnificently with the rest of his clothes. And he, his skin is as if someone we have papier mache seems to be a theme here but this is as if someone just wet these old old pages from books and glued them to his skin layer upon layer upon layer so there's just words and words and words all over his skin um, it's in english french latin japanese chinese korean swedish norwegian plenty of different languages probably every kind they're just a mishmash all over his body and um you swear there's some arabic in there too and well, that answers one of my questions yeah well i um i suppose you'll want to sit down do you want some tea i have uh tea coffee um don't have any biscuits i'm afraid but i'm sure we'll make do should be fine for now yeah. coffee of course, coffee, right? I got some on my my office. I'm sure you have questions, but first of all, I'd just like to say welcome to Little Brook. Welcome back, I suppose, seeing that, or from what I've heard, you're former citizens. Is that correct? That is correct. Right, that does narrow down the options quite a bit. Just a question, if you don't mind. How did you get here why does everybody keep asking us that on a giant we got here the same way as everybody else we ran on a giant beetle on a giant beetle you say that's uh that's, uh, that's interesting that's very interesting the reason we're asking this is because well i'm sure you've been told by now knowing that amanda and and uh, Patty's been with you, and he gives a man a glass, and she just shrugs. I didn't tell them that. Well, regardless, I'm sure, are you sure you didn't tell them that? She kind of looks a little bit awkward. Well, regardless, it's been 17 years since we kind of put the lid on Little Brook, so to speak. And since then, there's not been a single hide nor hair of any creature from Arcadia nor the Hedge. You are the what first one put the lid on Little Brook. Well, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, this small Minnesotan town has a rather large amount of, I would say, kidnappings throughout history. Any student of history will realize by studying just a few of the town records that no other town in Minnesota I would wager no other town in the United States has had this many kidnappings from, well, to Arcadia. In 2002, we decided that enough was enough and conducted a ritual that essentially cut us off from Arcadia. Th that the was ritual why. worn off. And that is troubling indeed. I did receive a dragon emoji in my phone, so I'm assuming that something else, presumably a dragon, came with you. Would that be a correct assumption? I don't really care whose fault it is. It's once yes. the once it the us through. of course, once the uh, breach has been made, then really it's not up to you what comes through or not. Where did you come through? In the woods. In the woods. Take you there. In the woods? The... No, I mean, where did you come the back? Diner. The what? Oh, no. right in front of the diner. In yeah. front of the diner. Are you 
just in front of the diner. That that's where you came out. Middle in the middle of the street. Yeah. The bridge. Yeah. The bridge. All right. I see. Well, yeah, it came out of the covered bridge, right? The covered bridge. I'll have to go there and investigate the area myself. But I'm sure you've all been through quite a lot, and I have plenty of time to ask my questions. What are your questions? I have one. Did you know we were still there when you did the ritual? We knew you'd been taken. We knew your fetch had left Little Brook a few years earlier to uh, travel to Fargo, I believe it was. But we didn't know if he was still alive. We had no way of knowing if you were in Arcadia or not. Well, if something was left behind in her place, didn't that mean she had? We knew she had been Arcadia. taken, of course, but you must understand that plenty of people are taken and never return. There are seven of us in town. Well, 13 now with the six of you. And through history, I would wager that the numbers are in the hundreds. Speak up for the first time since Matthew started talking. Does the name Mother mean anything to you? One would say. Mother is a fairly common name, but I would also rather you use perhaps an, a, another word. Um, we generally prefer to use the gentry here or the others, simply because you never know who's listening. However, the term Mother, I not familiar with that uh well as in the in this sense is that the name of your keeper i'm not sure what a keeper is but yes and there's more the creature you were talking about earlier that was her well my mount for some time the purpose I was put to was chasing those who tried to escape. And the baby, the beast, was part of it. I mean, maybe that's how it got through. It's it... quite possible. It's a good theory. If you'll excuse me for a second, I need to go get the, the tea and the coffee. But consider your questions for now, and uh, we will resume this conversation in a couple of minutes. All You've right. given me already quite a lot to think about. And it's about time we finish the episode for today. All right. So we've got to go. It's past midnight over here, at least. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for watching. And thank you, my amazing players. Before, yeah. Before we go, really quickly. Can you see? <gasps> the cake was a lie. <laughs> the cake was a lie. You didn't get a cake. Oh, no. oh You didn't get a cake. <laughs> Welcome back to Lilbrook. No. So it's I drew it cake. for us because it was yeah. a lie. It's not a lie. She just didn't have time to get the cakes. <laughs> oh, She's so tired. <laughs> That's pretty good, I have to say. That was amazing. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And thank you again, everyone, for watching. Uh, we will be back next week. However, in two weeks, the 31st, I will unfortunately, un unfortunately not be able to host a game. So most likely we will not be streaming at that point or perhaps something pre-recorded. We'll be back again the 7th of November. Um, I do believe that, uh, Adam, you will not be able to join us at that time. I, I, I will see, but probably not. Of course. No. But we'll record and you'll be able to watch the episode later. And thank you everyone for playing and for joining us. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you. All right. Bye. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, audience. Bye, Have a good night. <laughs> Bye.